Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And I'm sorry I've been at Tank Fest, and so I wasn't able to get you this as quickly as I wanted. But better late than never, we are going to be checking out the AC4 Experimental, a Tier 6 British Premium Medium tank that does share some characteristics with its Sentinel brother. Firstly, let's compare this vehicle to a lot of the other Tier 6 Premium tanks, including the Cromwell Berlin, and see if it is worth the price tag. So I'm going to be comparing the AC4 Experimental to the Tier 6 British Premium Medium tank, the Cromwell Berlin, the Sherman Firefly, which is a standard Tier 6 British medium tank, as well as the T-3485 Rudy, which is a Tier 6 premium Soviet medium tank, and the AC-1 Sentinel, a vehicle that was released a couple of months ago sitting at Tier 4. But as you're going to see, the hull of the AC-1 is very similar to that of the AC-4. So immediately we see that the Experimental has the same DPM as the Rudy, which unfortunately is way, way worse than the Cromwell Berlin and worse than that of the Sherman Firefly. The AC-4 uses a 76 millimeter gun, larger than that of the Cromwell Berlin, but smaller than the Rudy, giving this vehicle 150 alpha damage, which is better than the Cromwell Berlin, but worse than the 85mm gun of the Soviet medium tank. Unfortunately for the AC-4, the maximum amount of ammunition the vehicle can carry is 50 rounds, giving this vehicle a potential average damage of 7,500 if it manages to penetrate all of its shells, which is less than that of the Cromwell Berlin, which has 8,640 potential damage. And even though the caliber of the gun is the same as the Sherman Firefly, it carries a third less ammunition. And so this is definitely something to take into account with the AC4 Experimental, that when you start to have a gigantic game, if you haven't been very tight with your marksmanship, you might start to run low on ammunition or be forced to dip in that reserve of premium rounds that you take. Thankfully, the AC4 Experimental's aim time is awesome. 2.1 seconds is great for a tier six medium tank. That's as good as the Sherman Firefly and much better than the Cromwell Berlin. Furthermore, this vehicle has the best dispersion values in this compared comparison at 0.2, that's better than the Sherman Firefly and way better than the Cromwell Berlin. Meaning that the overall gun handling on the AC4 is way better than the Cromwell Berlin, but I must hasten to add, not that much better than the Sherman Firefly, and that's because the Sherman Firefly can use vertical stabilizers and the AC4 cannot. Meaning that the very slight advantage that the vehicle has in the gun dispersion values is countered by the fact that you can't use one of the most important pieces of the equipment in the game like the Sherman Firefly can. Unfortunately, the accuracy on the AC4 is very disappointing indeed. It is 0.39, that's worse than the Cromwell Berlin and even worse than the Firefly. And so you probably want to keep the engagements at mid-range because when you start to fire long long-range shots, that's very disappointing. But one thing I failed to mention during the firepower review is the fact that this vehicle gets awesome penetration, 171 on its standard ammunition. That is massively better than the Grumwell Berlin and way better than the T-3485 Rudy, and that's because it gets this kind of 17-pounder, which is more like a tank destroyer than it is a medium tank. 171 millimeters of penetration is fantastic on a Tier 6 tank. That's even good for a Tier 6 tank destroyer, meaning that you should be able to penetrate pretty much all of the vehicles on the enemy team frontally, and if 171 is not enough for you, just take a look at the APDS rounds that this vehicle gets. 239 millimeters of penetration, so when there are those tier 8 heavies on the enemy team that you really have to go through, you can reliably do so. And it's worth mentioning that this 239 millimeters of penetration on the premium rounds is way better than the 202 millimeters that the Cromwell Berlin gets. Now on to another aspect of the AC4 that is utterly awesome, and that is 10 degrees of gun depression. That's two degrees better than the Cromwell Berlin four degrees better than the Sherman Firefly, giving you the flexibility you need to be an absolute little terror if you get behind a ridgeline. So how about the mobility of the AC-4? Well, this is why you see that I left in the AC-1 Sentinel in this comparison. 60 km an hour top speed limit, which is rather nice. Way, way, way better than the Sherman Firefly and only slightly worse than one of the fastest tier six medium tanks, the Cromwell Berlin. Unfortunately for the vehicle, as its power to weight ratio is 11.7, this means the vehicle will hardly ever be able to get towards that 60 km an hour top speed limit especially considering the ground resistances on this tank are way worse than the Cromwell Berlin and when I say way worse I'm talking about double on hard terrain double on medium terrain and 50% worse on soft terrain do not think that you are going to have anywhere near the level of mobility 
that you do have on the Cromwell Berlin. Or if you're a Sherman Firefly driver anywhere near what the vehicle is capable of up until the top speed limit of 36 kilometers an hour. Luckily, the vehicle's turret traverses an excellent 44 degrees and the tank's track traverses a rather decent 40 degrees, which kind of softens that awful power to weight ratio and ground resistances. So how about the armor of the AC-4? Well, again, very similar to that of the AC-1. It has 65 millimeters of frontal turret armor, 45 at the side and 45 at the rear, and its turret armor is 65 this must be an error, and 65 at the back. Indeed, closer inspection shows that this vehicle does have between 50 and 65 millimeters of side turret armor, and between 50 and 65 on the back. So let's take a look at the AC4 Experimental's armor. Let's put it on live and try and angle the front of the tank at a very extreme nature. Unfortunately, the 65 millimeters of frontal armor never gets above an effective armor thickness of 90 millimeters and that is not a lot most tanks are going to have over 90 millimeters of penetration on their guns that will be shooting at you remember this vehicle can see tier 8 tanks on the enemy team and so that means that your best bet is to try and angle the armor like this and hope that they hit your side where you're going to get above 70 degrees of angling which will auto ricochet so how about using the 10 degrees of gun depression that this vehicle gets let's try and take a look at that even still, the whole of your hull armor, apart from some tiny areas, are not going to be ricocheting any shots. So I guess then you have to depend on the mantlet of the tank. So how does the mantlet work? 65 to about 125 in places. That might be rather effective against equal and lower tier tanks, but higher tier tanks and many non-stock vehicles are going to go right through your turret armor. And so that means with the AC4, you should try not to get shot at pretty much all costs, a lot like with a Cromwell Berlin. So finally, the AC4 has 360 meters view range. That's not great for a tier six vehicle, but then again, it's not bad. Exactly the same as the Cromwell Berlin, 10 meters less than the, the Firefly and five meters less than the Rudy. This means that if you have a very skilled crew, you can probably get away with using coated optics on this tank if you're willing to use premium consumable as well. So what kind of equipment would I recommend on the AC4? 100% of the time you are going to be using a gun rammer on this tank like you would on all vehicles in the game that can possibly mount it. Next I would recommend taking improved ventilation class 2 on this vehicle to increase your crew skills by 5% and because you cannot use vertical stabilizers on this tank that leaves you with a choice between either binoculars or coated optics. Now for me personally I'm going to be using pudding on this tank because I don't really have anything left in the game to spend credits on and also I'll be using my very skilled comic crew in the vehicle with brothers in arms and also situational awareness which does raise the view range when I use coated optics to 447. However if you're not in the same situation as me and you're not using all of the crew skills that boost your view range as well as putting in tea I would recommend using binoculars instead as your view range otherwise is probably only likely to get just above 400 meters but with binoculars you're going to be getting up to at least 450. So what kind of crew skills would I recommend on the AC4? Well things like recon, things like situational awareness are very, very useful for boosting up your view range uh, for 5% when you combine them both. Next up, I would recommend taking camouflage on this vehicle and not repairs because its health points are 750, meaning that you can barely take more than one shot from many vehicles. And I think it's more important to avoid getting shot in this tank in the first place than it is to repair the vehicle after you've already used your repair kit, I guess, the first time. Next up, useful skills on this tank will be to improve the ground resistances by using off-road driving, safe stowage on your loader to avoid getting ammo racked as much, and personally for me because this is my comic crew which has got a very very good rate of fire and low alpha damage, I like to use Deadeye which increases my chance to crit my opponents and also Eagle Eye which lets me know when I have damaged their modules. But this is only something I would recommend when you get up to about five skills in this tank so you probably don't have to worry about that for now. But I think that's quite enough theory crafting, let's see how this performs in some gameplay. So we've got the pleasure of watching Drunk Tank Soldier PL. Wow, what a name really. And he is living up to his name because he's forgotten to take a repair kit and a med kit at this tank. But hell, it's a new vehicle. All right, immediately, one of the reasons why I picked this replay is because it showcases the mobility of this tank going up this slope here on Swamp. Lots of medium tanks love to fight for this northeast corner of the map. And look, there goes the Cromwell. There you go. That gives you an idea of just how slow the experimental is. The Cromwell is already... We're talking about a couple of hundred meters away from us. We're being overtaken by that Hellcat, unsurprisingly. This Cromwell, I guess he's just a little bit slower, so we're not going to really worry about him too much. The Skoda T25s, they've all just left the experimental behind in its wake. So we're only able to go at about 30, 35 along the slope here. Now we're going up, we're down to about 30. This gives you an idea that you'd probably be best to be in a Firefly right about now. A Firefly 
limited to that 36 kilometers an hour, would still be going up the slope faster than the AC4 is capable of. So again, if you're picking up this tank thinking, wow, 60 kilometers an hour, that sounds like really awesome top speed limit, right? Yeah, yeah, but you have to have the ground resistances and the engine power to, to weight ratio, that specific power ratio of the tank for it to mean anything. And going up this, ah, this, is, this is quite a steep slope, but it's not the steepest slope that you will ever be going up in the game, right? You're limited down to 20 kilometers an hour, and you really do feel like a heavy tank driving around in this machine. But, I guess when you get into situation, god, 12 kilometers an hour, that's just awful. I guess when you get into the right situation, having that, that 76.2 millimeter, I believe the 17 pounder gun that this vehicle gets, it will start to uh, show you what this tank is capable of. So, drunk tank soldier notices that there's a bit of a stalemate going on around this corner, and he wants to make the difference here. Now, usually, what he's about to do would require a few pints worth to uh, <laughs> to do this. He's completely ignoring the fact that everyone on the enemy team is likely to be camping there, and he is just going ham right now. He spotted this M4. Well, spotted him. He's right in front of him. He puts one round into that M... Oh, no, he doesn't quite finish him off here. The M4A3E2 shuts down that tier 6 American medium tank. Now turns his attention to the Firefly. Remember, that's an important tank for this comparison. Kills him, and then goes after the Skoda T25. And it looks like the full guy was the Skoda T25 behind him, who took the hits. And somehow, he seems to avoid every single artillery round that, that was ever fired. <laughs> and manages to escape completely unscathed having picked up three kills. Well, I tell you what, he, you know what, drunk tank soldier, you're certainly living up to your name, and I wonder if you were wasted when you were playing this. But hell, it looks like a bit of Dutch courage every once in a while certainly does get you the result, hey? And you help your team to break through that flank. And you know what, that was very important in this game because this is a 37 percenter, and so he had to have a, very, a, a big role, a big impact in this game to be able to give his team a, a very good chance of, chance of winning. One thing you will have noticed there is that when we were going downhill, the tank was actually rather fast. It got up to that 60 km an hour top speed limit. However, now the Cromwells started to overtake it as it was going up. And this is one of the things that I found is very frustrating about the AC4. The lack of engine power, the good top speed limit. It's a bit like bombing it around in an IS-7, I guess. Sometimes, you know, you're able to, to get where you need to go quickly. Other times you just feel like you wish that you were in the Cromwell or alternatively in the Cromwell Berlin. However, that 10 degrees of gun depression allows him to nail one into the bishop over the ridge line there and follows it up with a second shell to secure a kill on the tier 5 British self-propelled gun. He sets that steward on fire, burning him to death and then auto-aims at the M41, quickly auto-aims off and goes after the Skoda. And one thing you'll notice there is he actually bounced an APCR round from the Skoda T25 on the enemy team, rams a little bit into the M41 and finishes him off with another shell. Puts one into the KV-85, however, he is auto-aiming and I think he should have been in your, your first person there. Oh my word, God. Trunk Tank Soldier is on an absolute riot here. He's already picked up eight kills in four and a half minutes, 1,856 damage. Fair enough, the tanks that he's been shooting at have either been low on health or, or low on tier. But gosh, this is an absolute riot, this game. So Drunk, drunk Tank Soldier is now trying to go after this, this Stuart. But again, highlighting the poor mobility of this tank, he's unable to catch up with the, the, the Stuart here as he's just basically kiting him around the rock. Again, I think that if he was in the Cromwell or the Cromwell Berlin here, he would have easily been able to chase down this vehicle. Maybe the Stuart be able to keep pace against a, a Cromwell Berlin, but finally Drunk Tank Soldier shows that if he goes down the slope, he should be able to catch up with the vehicle. And again, the Stuart manages to escape. Slow, 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 slow. Finally goes down the slope, catches up a little bit on the momentum, and manages to finish off the Stuart. And now an SU-8 comes out of nowhere. I guess he wants to, wanted to try and catch Drunk Tank Soldier unaware. However, bang, a nice roll in there and he finishes him off. And unfortunately for, drank, uh, for Drunk Tank Soldier, there's a blooming Skoda inside the cap circle all the way over there who managed to get 100% of the cap. And so even though he just picked up his 10th kill on the artillery at the end of the game, it's over and he doesn't get an opportunity to hunt down the very tasty M6 that would have been in the center on Swamp.
So an absolutely ludicrous game here for Drunk Tank Soldier. He managed to pick up a Pascucci's medal for killing three enemy artillery, a Pools medal for that final 10th kill of the game, and unsurprisingly a high caliber for the 2446 that he was able to do. This was 1,354 base experience points, and let's take a look at how many credits he was able to make. Wow, that's, that's fairly decent. Didn't fire any premium rounds this game. He didn't use any consumables because he didn't take any and made 54,000 credits profit. Also, I should highlight that this vehicle does get a very nice meaty bonus for being a premium and also being tier six. 609 bonus experience of the 2031 that he received should make this quite a nice crew trainer if you like the Cromwell, or like me, the Comet. And so now comes the part of the video where I describe if the AC4 Experimental is worth it. And I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get you this video sooner, but Wargaming basically sprung this up as I was driving down to Tankfest, you cheeky buggers. And it's only going to be available for the rest of today and also tomorrow. It costs 14 euros and 80 cents. And the package includes the vehicle, a garage slot, 100% train crew. But for me, that's really not very useful because you're very likely to have a Cromwell a Cromwell Berlin crew or a Comet crew that you will be able to move straight into this tank. It also comes with five emblems and desert camouflage. So here you can see the unique desert camouflage that already comes pre-applied to the vehicle. And there are also a selection of emblems that come with the vehicle. One of the first armored division, the second motorized division and second tank division, the first motorized division, the third tank battalion, and finally the third tank division. And so if you're into the military history of this tank, or maybe you just want to look extra special on San River or El Haloof, maybe the experimental is just that little bit sweeter. But overall for me, I would probably rather have a Cromwell Berlin than an AC4. The fact that you lose so much DPM, you lose a hell of a lot of mobility is not worth the gains in the penetration, the gun depression, and also the aim time. But then again, for history buffs, fans of British medium tanks who want another crew trainer that isn't the Cromwell Berlin, or maybe just tank collectors, will probably want to pick up this vehicle. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to see the AC4 Experimentals, baby brother the AC1 Sentinel, then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the AC4 Experimental. Do you think it's worth it? Will you be picking one up? Would you rather have this in the Cromwell Berlin, or do you think you're going to be skipping out on this? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.